Good afternoon, church family. If you would, stand with us and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Brother Rady's going to carry us to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we're thankful for our ability to come out today. We realize that our health is a, a precious thing, and we'd remember those, especially of our church family, who uh, are incapacitated and, and having other things that go wrong. But we meet tonight to recognize you as our Savior. We thank you, Lord, for uh, that, what it cost you. And uh, as we look from last Sunday, when we celebrated the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ from that cross and that grave, we thank you, Lord, that you've gathered us together. We ask, Lord, you'd bless each of us Help us to uh, feel you in our service, in our hearts, in minds, and we just thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Rady. Amen. The old rugged cross tonight. Rugged cross 
Till my trophies at last I lay down And I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown Good evening. Good to see y'all today. Uh, Got something that's kind of on my heart this uh, this evening that, that kind of touched me because I'm I'm one of these type of people that I I don't know about you but I think a lot about how people look at me and I, I was listening as, as you was praying a lot of you that as you was praying you was praying praying for for the message praying for me and the thing that I noticed is that you was praying that God would give me the message to give to you that's what I pray about. And I pray that God would always give me what I, what I need to, to present to you because uh, I, I think about this. A lot of times we see people for the first time in our life and, and whenever we see somebody for the first time in our life, we, we, we think about them and we kind of draw a conclusion on them. And we kind of say, you know something, I, I don't like that person. The first time you see them, you know, I just don't like that person. Or you may meet somebody and, and think, you know, I, I like that person. That's a nice person right there. But then after you get to know them, you find out that they're not what you thought they were the whole time. So I, I ask you, how does people look at you most of the time whenever they're viewing you for the first time? You know, are they looking at you and they uh, scouring up at you and saying, oh man, I don't like that person. Or are they looking at you and saying, you know, that person has a sweet heart about them or they're, they're a kind and compassionate person. And the reason I'm asking you that is because I want you to start looking and paying attention and seeing how people, how people view you and what they may, how they present themselves to you. I know that there's times right now, times are completely strange right now and you go out places and you, and you look at people and they, you don't even know who they are a lot of times. Because you see people and they have their mask on or, they're, or people are even avoiding people and avoiding crowds. So you, you have to find out, a, find out who is that person that you're looking at. So it's different out there right now. So I want you to make sure that you're the type of person whenever people see you, they view you and say, you know, that person right there, you can tell that they're a good person, a godly person. Because I, I want to ask you this, are you a caring person? A type of person that that whenever people sees you, they want to pour out their heart to you. I don't know if you're that type of person, but I, I know several of you in here are the type of person that, that if somebody's having a, a problem or a trial, that they'll call you and want to talk out their problems. That's showing that you're a caring type person or, or a person that's trustworthy, that you would, that you would give any, you would, you would go and, Hand your child over to that person because you know that child is going to be that type of person. They're going to care for it and be good. Are you a compassionate person? A person who, I, I think about this, and, and we have two ears and one mouth for a reason because there's a lot of times that we need to listen to people with compassion. And I'm speaking to the preacher right now. Uh, that you've got to listen with compassion before you open your mouth and you speak because a lot of times people just want you to be there and be a, be a, a listening ear or a caring ear. A lot of things that we're going through right now, people just want to talk out their situations. They want to bounce things and bounce problems off of you. So, so be that caring person and also ask yourself, are you loving? Are you the kind of person that that whenever you get through with your conversation, do you tell people, you know, I love you, or you, or I, and I, y'all may think that I'm repetitive about this, and I, and if you are, then you don't, you don't understand me. Whenever I, whenever we get through having a, a, a church service, and I know y'all are about to leave, and I, I get through preaching, and I say I love y'all, there's a reason that I say that, and it's not just words that comes out of my mouth. Or if I'm uh, texting a group text on our prayer chain and I, and I tell something about the funeral or something that's going to happen that's going on and I put down I love y'all, I want you to know that goes completely against my character. But that's what I am now. See, my character is all about me, 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 me. But I want you to know God has changed me and says, look, I want you to love those people. And not only do I want you to love them, I want you to tell them that you love them. 
And see, Paul, he was talking in Ephesians 1.15, and I want to get y'all into the scripture that I'm looking at. And, and I want y'all to see what he's saying in Ephesians 1.15. He says, he says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus. He's, he's saying, look, I've heard about your faith. That, you know, we can hear about people's faith and, and realize that people's faith is shallow. Or people's faith is not strong in any kind of way. But he's saying, I have heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and he goes on to say, and it says, and love. See, the one thing I realize, if you, if you have the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ and you have love, then you're going to be that caring person. You're going to be that compassionate person, trustworthy person. You're going to be that, all these uh, traits that I just got through talking about because you care and because you have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And it says, and, and to all the saints. And listen to this, he said this. I, 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 all whenever I read Paul's letters, the one thing that I realize that's important about Paul's letters is he always tells people that he's talking to. He tells them, he lets them know how much he cares about them, but also he lets them know that he's praying for them. He's praying for them as that letter is getting to them. He's praying that that, that, that letter is going, to be, uh, that it's going to be received in the right way. If you think about it on Wednesday nights, we've always, for years and years, we've sent out the prayer letters. And, and what we do is we pray for people. And we send out the prayer letters. And, and I know that there's a lot of people that are still sending out letters and still loving on people in that kind of way. But the one thing that I realize is, is whenever we send those letters out, if we pray them all the way to where they get to people, the response from those letters is great. Paul was saying, look, I'm praying for you. He even said this right here. He said, I cease not to give thanks for you. And he said, I'm making mention of you in my prayers. He's letting them know. He said, look, I care about you. And it's something that it's always on the tip of my tongue to pray and lift you up. And you may be asking, why in the world would Paul be, be really caring about somebody? See, we ask ourselves a lot of time, why do we care for people like we do? You know, if y'all look at me, I'm thinking, you know, I'm, I'm not really worth that much, I, but, but I know that y'all love me. And you may look at your own self and say, you know something, I, I, I just don't see what Brother Steve sees in us that he always tells us that he loves them. But listen, Paul says, I want to see you grow. Paul is telling him, he said, listen to what he said in verse 17. He said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ and the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of his wisdom. He's saying, look, I want to see you grow. I want to see you have the wisdom of God. I want to see you be strong. I want to see whenever you read the Word, I want you to, to see it prosper in your life. There's a lot of people, whenever they pick up the, the Bible, they don't really understand what the Bible's saying. You know why? Because there's a lot of these, thou's, thus in here that is hard. It's hard to understand. And the thing about it is, is you've got to keep on keeping on because... It is important that we get the wisdom that we need from the Lord. And, and it says, and the revelation. You know, I looked at that and I thought, why in the world is that word right there in this part? Why is, why is revelation in this part? It doesn't really make sense because we think about the book of Revelation. We think about what it's telling. It's telling about what's happening. So I, I looked at that about revelation and, I, and it said, uh, a, a surprising and previously unknown fact. You know, that makes sense because, because whenever I read the book of Revelation, there's a lot of things that I don't know and I don't understand. And as God reveals more to me, it is a, 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 a surprise and unknown fact about what God gives me. And listen to this, a divine or supernatural disclosure of prophecy. Every one of us, we want to open up the Word of God and we want to learn more and we want to know more. And the thing about it is, is, is God says, I want to give you wisdom, but I want to give you my revelation. I want you to realize what's coming. See, the reason that we celebrated this past week, and I'm still celebrating now, and I noticed in your prayers you are still celebrating the risen Savior. The reason we do that is because we're looking back at what, at what Jesus Christ did. Whenever He died on that cross for us and He rose from that grave, we're looking back at that and we celebrate that all year long. But now we're also, prophecy tells us that Jesus Christ is going to come again. 
And whenever Jesus comes again, he's going to come and he's going to get all of us, his church, the people who are ready for him. And that's, that's the divine revelation. That is the, the supernatural disclosure of prophecy. The only thing that I can tell you that I know is going to happen is I know according to God's word that Jesus Christ is going to come back and get me. He's going to. It's going to happen. You know why? Because it is written in God's Word and it's a revelation that He's told about. So I want you to have wisdom. I want you to know about the revelation. And it says this right here. And I want you to know about the knowledge of Him. See, if we don't know about the knowledge of God, then people can make us wonder and go different ways. I hear people that are ungodly, that are ungodly, make this comment. What if God's will we'll do this or we'll do that. And we know that that person are, may not be a Christian, but they just throw God's name out there and use God's name any old way. Well, let me share something with you. It is God's will that no man perish, but that all come to the saving grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's God's will. But whenever a lost person, a person who's living a lost life, that they go up there and they make a comment and they say, well, if God's will... I want you to know something. That person better be careful because their life is not lining up to God's will. See, God wants His will to be done in every one of our lives. So we've got to be very careful. We've got to pay attention to what God's will is for us. And, and I want y'all to see this right here because there's more. And, and he adds more into this letter. Listen to what he does in verse 18. He says that, uh, that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened. That enlightened means that, you, that everything that you see, everything that you think, everything that you know of God, that it opens up to where you have more understanding of God. I believe that it's time for our nation to start having an understanding of God. I believe that our nation right now is putting God up on a, a little old bitty figurine right there that they, that they are sitting there saying, you know, God, he's pretty tough, isn't he? And they put a little figurine up there. Let me tell you something about my God. My God is all-knowing, all-powerful. He knows what's going on. It is not surprising Him in any kind of way. And I think about God all the time, how He is trying to get our understanding, and He's trying to enlighten us about everything that's going on. We're sitting here saying, why is this happening? See, God knows why it's happening, and I'm going to tell you what He's doing. I don't know if y'all noticed, but uh, there's a lot of people here Sunday. You know why? Number one day of church. Number one day of church. It's everything you base your whole faith on is on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Without Jesus rising, there would be no such thing as, as, as us coming to church. There'd be no such thing as Christianity. You know why? All it would be is, is a bunch of Bible that we was talking about. Even lost people knows that they need to celebrate a risen Savior. Even lost people. It's important. You know why? Because even lost people, at that one day, they're getting enlightened. They get their understanding. They may be getting it from their parents. They may be getting it from their grandparents. But they understand that they know. Listen to this. I want to go on more. That they may, that they may know what is the hope. And I, I want to tell you what that hope of, of his calling, that hope is a heavenly hope. That, that hope is a heavenly destiny, a heavenly destination that we're having. The hope is, is all in Christ Jesus. And it says, and of his calling. I don't know if any of you think that you're called by the Lord, but I'm going to tell you something. Once you ask Jesus to come into your heart, all of you are called. I'm going, I'm going to give you an example. Whenever, whenever a, a couple, and right now it's time that people's getting ready to, to do, do marriages and weddings and all that stuff, they walk down that aisle. After they get through, they come down here and bless his heart. The old preacher's sitting here nervous as a cat because everybody's listening to every word that preacher says. So if that preacher stumbles in any kind of way, they're saying, oh, did you hear that preacher stumble over those words? Well, see, yes, we do. We stumble over those words because we know of the importance because they are making a commitment to God. They're saying that I love that person. Well, they, they complete their vows. As they make that, as they do their vows, you know what they're doing? The next thing they know is whenever they say they do, whenever they say I do, you know what they're doing? They're telling God, God, 
I'm going to be married to my husband and I'm going to be married to my wife forever and ever. Whenever we say we do, we mean that. It's the same way whenever we get down before our face, before God, we ask Him to come, become Lord and Savior in our life. We're saying, Lord, I do. I want you to change me. I do. I want you to mold me. I do, Lord, want you to touch my life every day. And that's what we do. We tell the Lord that. And we got the hope of His calling. And it says, And what is the riches of His glory, His inheritance in, uh, in the saints. Every one of us got an inheritance if we're, if we're born again believers. The Bible says, Don't you store up His treasures here on earth where moth and dust corrupt. It, we have an inheritance that we are putting in heaven. And I, you know, I, I just noticed it today. I think what it is is my, uh, either my ring, wedding ring has gotten smaller or my fingers have gotten fatter. So I, I looked down there uh, just the other day, and I looked, and, and it looked like it there was a, the ring was kind of sucking into my finger real good, and I could not get that ring off, so I panicked. I'm not going to lie to you. I panicked a little bit. Went back there and finally got that ring off and, and walked in there to my wife, and I told her, I said, I said look, look at this right here. I, she said, she said what would you take your ring off for? And I said, because I could. See, I took it off because I was able to with soap and cold water and all that stuff. So you know what I'm going to do now? I'm going to go get that wedding ring stretched a little bit because obviously from when I was in my mid-twenties to right now, something's changed about my finger. See, I want you all to know, whenever you become a Christian, whenever you get saved, Something should change about you that you can't even look at your life and it be the same. People should look at your life and say, man, he's went through a change. Y'all, I want you to know, I have went through a change in my life and it's not just with my finger. I have changed from right here, deep down in my heart. I hope you've changed. The Bible tells us this right here. Verse 19. And what is the exceedingly greatness of His power to usward? Y'all, I, I think about that. You know, it's talking about God's power toward us. Listen to this. Who believe? And the Bible goes on to say this right here. According to the working of His mighty power. See, his, the power of the Lord is something that, that brings unity. God's power bring, brings unity to believers. God's power brings unity to marriages. God's power brings unity to relationships and, and to your, your businesses. God's power. And let me tell you, if you've got a business and you're not putting God's power in that business, that business is only going to sustain for a little bit because God believes that all people puts God in the center of everything that they do, in the center of their worship, in the center of their marriage. The Bible says that God is a jealous God. He doesn't want you to have anything that comes between you and Him. That's what God's all about. So He wants unity. So listen to what Ephesians 2.12 says. I want to read you this scripture. I'm about done. Ephesians 2.12 says this. That at that time, you were without Christ. All of us. At some time in our life, we was without Christ. And we were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of the promise. Y'all, every single one of us at some time in our life, we was aliens from the Lord Jesus Christ. That means that, that means that we didn't know anything about His Spirit convicting us, His love and His compassion. And it says this right here, having no hope. Y'all, if you put your hope and your confidence and your trust in anything, you better put it in the Lord Jesus Christ. You better make sure that you know Him. You better make certain that you put His, everything about Him into your life and try to get more every day. The Bible says hunger and thirst after righteousness. Well, that's what we need to do. And it, says, and it says, and without God in this world, we've got to make sure that we keep God in this world. The Bible says in verse 13, it says, Now, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes or you who were once were far off, were made near by the blood of Christ. The reason, the reason you go to church 
The reason you study your Bible, pray. The reason you sing a praise song. The reason you ride down the, down the road and you lift up your hands in your vehicle. The reason that you cry whenever you see a baby born. The reason is because you are near to the Lord for what He's done for you. And the last scripture I've got is this right here. For He is our peace. You follow me? In a trying time, you better make sure that the Lord is your peace. And the Bible says, Who had made both one and have broken down the middle wall and the partition between us. Y'all, let me share something with you. Right now, everybody here, we pray for our country, we pray for our nation, we pray for our health, we pray for our healing. But let me share something with you. It is us, Christ Jesus, and the world. He separates us from this world. He has separated us from tragedy. He has separated us from trials. And yes, we go through trials in our life. We have people that have suffered. But I'm going to tell you what God does. He breaks down those old walls and those barriers. And I want you to know nothing in this world could keep us. Should keep us from being close to our brothers and sisters in Christ. Nothing in this world should keep us from being, wanting to be in the house of God, worshiping the Lord. Nothing should keep us from, from praising His name. Nothing should keep us from living for Him. We need to live for Him until He comes back and gets us. You know why? Because we got the hope. We've got the assurance of knowing that what we celebrated this past week of the resurrected Christ, we've got the hope knowing that He is alive and He is well and He is interceding for us and He is touching hearts and He is changing lives. So let Him change yours. Let Him change mine. That's what He's all about. Touching people's lives. And then when people see you, they'll say, you know, that person right there must be a Christian. Look at the way they're living their life. Look at the joy that they have and where there's no joy around them, they still have joy. I had a person tell me this today. This person told me this and I, me and him was doing something and, and he told me, he said, I just want you to know, he said, I've made everybody that I've talked to today mad. And I told him, I said, you ain't going to make me mad. He said, well, he said, you won't be around me long if I, I, or I'll make you mad. I said, no, you won't. And he, he looked at me and he said, I probably will. And I said, no, I said, I got too much in my heart today to allow you to make me mad. I was around him for a while. He never made me mad. Next thing you know, we were laughing and we was having a good time. You know something? Next thing I realized, I looked at him and I told him, I said, I made you happy, didn't I? See, we have a choice. We can allow somebody to make us mad or we can make somebody happy. So I chose that. You know why? Because that's what God's given me. Make sure you use what God's given you for His glory. Then when people see you, they'll say, you know something, there's something different about that person. Amen? Let's pray. God, find us faithful. Lord, find us uh, spiritually awakening. God, find us to where we're, we're looking for you in every avenue of our life. God, I pray that your spirit goes out and, and God touches people's lives. Lord, what we're doing right now as a church, we're sending out letters. We're sending out letters through a message. We're sending out letters through singing. We're sending out letters and, and, and God just trying to reach people in the best way we know how. Lord, go before it and touch people's lives. Lord, let them be a shining example of Christ Jesus in them. But Lord, first off, they need to be saved. They need to know you. They need to be real. So Lord, touch people's hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I love y'all.